How to use light to optimize your mind. Now, light has a pretty profound impact on our biology. It helps our sleep, our metabolism, recovery, how well we feel, and of course, our brain. In fact, there's things called junk light, which may manifest into things like ADHD, where you, wait, what was I talking about? Exactly. Light is incredibly important, especially for focus of the mind and the body. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can optimize light in your entire day so you have better focus, hormones, sleep, energy, and just feel better. You ready for it? Let's dive in. Now, I've been improving my performance for over 15 years, yes, you can do the math on that, since after college in 2006. And I can say that once I started incorporating light, light behavior into my life, I feel so much better and I'm much lighter up here. See what I did with that? I know a lot of people think that you need to do so much to get proper light, but really it doesn't take that much effort. You may be thinking, okay, uh, you're right. You're saying that this doesn't take a lot of effort, but oh, come on, man. Is there any science behind this? Or are you just another dude on YouTube and social media saying why you need to get light? There is science behind it. So let's start with that, huh? Now light affects our biology in a number of different ways, but the, one of the main things that light affects it is a light called blue light. Now this blue light is an artificial light. No, it's not actual blue in color. There are blue rays in the light, but it affects our biology and how we wake up or not being able to sleep as well. It's, it's very important. Think of it this way. Throughout human history, our main light source was the sun and fire. And with technology, we had all these other different light sources like these lights coming from the side behind me. Now, although the sun appears yellow, it emits all sorts of different rays and colors. There's different yellows, greens, oranges, blues, and invisible ultraviolet light spectrums. As you move across the spectrum of visible light, the wavelength of the light decreases and the energy energy increases. Now red light has the longest wavelength and the highest energy. The zone of the blue and purple is known as the HEV light, which stands for a high energy visible light. Now as the sun moves across the sky throughout the day, it either has more blue light or less blue light. At the beginning of the day, there is less blue light from the sun, it's not as bright, and there becomes more blue light as the sun comes up and gets much brighter. Now, once the sun has reached its peak point, when it's the brightest in the sky, and it starts going down, then that blue light goes down. So the blue light starts low, comes up high when the sun is high, and then starts to go down. Now, you may be thinking, oh, this might make sense for our biology. We're supposed to wake up with the sun. As the sun is coming up, the blue light is lower as we come up throughout the middle of the day, we're more awake and that sun starts to go down. So it's starting to regulate our circadian rhythm and throughout our lives with more technology and being up longer and longer, our circadian rhythm is really getting messed up. Now you may be thinking what happened when we had fire? Didn't that mess up our circadian rhythm? No, it did not. It doesn't actually emit that much light rays from it. So really technology is what's been messing us up. Now over the past 50 years, our use of artificial light, LED lights, all those sorts of things have gone up exponentially, which completely messes up our biology. So we really want to make sure that we have this all under control. Now you may be thinking, well, the blue light, it's okay. Well, yes, there's parts of the day when we want blue light. As I said, it wakes you up. But as you have light on all day and all night, our bodies don't know the difference between morning, midday, and night, and it makes it much more hard to fall asleep. And in turn, our biological processes start to get all all out of whack and can have a number of issues. Now an analysis of 85 studies looking at artificial light at night or ALAN has shown a lot of negative effects. It shows that it can have an increased risk in breast cancer, messed up circadian rhythm, can negatively affect our melatonin production because we want melatonin to rise towards the night to put us to sleep. It's not just something that you put in your mouth. It's an actual biological process. Uh, it can mess with the functions of our brain, our heart, and even negatively affect 
weight loss. Now that we know how light affects our biology, how about we utilize this for a benefit? Not only can too much light negatively affect you, but light in the correct ways can positively affect you as well. Now in this section, I'm gonna show you how to optimize your light behavior so you can really use the light in the right times to have more focus, more energy, and in turn get that circadian rhythm regulated so you can actually fall asleep faster and deeper. Sleep, this is one of the biggest areas where light can affect our health. Now, better sleep is one of the best ways you can do to actually just optimize your mind and think better. Remember, sleep is the only time where the brain repairs itself. Literally, through the night, your brain is cleaning itself out of all the crap and the toxins. Science. Now, this is a system called the glymphatic system, but this only happens, you guess it, when you sleep. Now there are a ton of other beneficial processes that occur while you sleep, but for now, we're gonna focus on this and how it protects your brain while you sleep so you can better function. Now, as I've said before, melatonin can disrupt your sleep by having too much light, right? We wanna make sure we have the right melatonin pulse at the right time, okay? You don't want melatonin early in the day when you're supposed to be awake, but you do want it later at night when you're supposed to go to sleep. Now, we can optimize that melatonin production by getting light early earlier in the day and starting to turn down the light later at night. So we're more mimicking that natural circadian rhythm of the sun going up and the sun going down. Now, ideally, you would stop getting artificial light when the sun is starting to hit that horizon. When you start to see the sun go down, you would start having less light as much as possible. And yes, probably staying off of your phone and turning off the overhead lights and things like that. So I know you don't want to be left in the dark here, literally and figuratively. So we're going to figure out how you can get less light and actually utilize that light throughout the day and night. Devices and software. This is one of the main forms of blue light that we're getting. Now you can use different things to help turn down the blue light in your phone or your computer or iPad or I whatever you have. Now you can use something called Flux, which is a free software program that you can download on your computer that'll start turning down the blue light that you're getting um, throughout the night so you can actually sleep sleep better and utilize that light better. Another thing that you could do is go on the brightness uh, of your phone. You can actually mess with it and turn it down so it's not as bright. Now, what about blue light blocking glasses? Now, this is something that I do the last couple of hours of night because honestly, I'm working all day long. I'm doing videos, doing TV, everything else. And yes, I like unwinding by watching a movie or, you know, on the TV or on my phone in bed. Now, here's the thing. Put on those blue light blocking glasses a couple hours before bed. That'll limit that blue light coming in. But if you've got a ton of light coming from overhead, ah, right here, okay, and you're not turning down your lights in general, that can still affect that if you're wearing the blue light blocking glasses. So one of the things that you can do is try to turn off those overhead lights. Overhead mimics the sun and use like floor lamps or candles. If it's not, you know, candles, you don't want to burn your house down. Um, you can use some of those um, electrical candles. So the light is lower. So that tricks your brain into thinking, oh, I'm winding down here. Or if there's an overhead light and you have that dimmer switch, turn it down a little bit while you're wearing those blue light blocking glasses. You can find those pretty much anywhere. I think I paid $20 for two pairs. Now, if you're budget conscious about blue light glasses, you don't have 20 bucks or whatever the price is, um, you can get an orange tinted pair of safety goggles and that can actually help as well. And those are a fraction of the price of the actual blue light glasses. Morning blue light. Wait a minute, you may be thinking uh, you've been telling me to stay away from blue light. No, as I said earlier, blue light is a good thing. We need the sun. So getting out in the sun, yes, if it's overcast, that is sun as well. It's still coming through even if you're not seeing it. This is one of the best ways to start regulating your circadian rhythm. So with an hour, when you get up in the morning, preferably try to stare towards the sun. Um, you can do this, you know, by your window or work at a window, but windows will block some of that lux light coming in up to 50 times, depending on the research that you're looking at. So one of the best things you can do is get outside. Yes, even if it's cold, getting cold, I promise is good for you. And walk outside for a few minutes or even 30 minutes. That's great. That'll start triggering your body, your 
eyes that it's morning. We're going to wake up here. Melatonin is going away. We're raising our energy levels, our metabolism, and you're getting ready for the day. So right there within the first hour, if you can get outside, if you can't get outside, work right by a window where the sun is coming in. Now what happens when you get this early morning sun, your body is regulating that circadian rhythm and it knows, okay, right now I don't need melatonin, right? And there's something called adenosine as well, which I can get into a sleep video too, um, which I wrote about in my upcoming book. Now adenosine also is working in conjunction with melatonin. They're separate pathways, but that adenosine is rising as we get more towards the evening and it's going to make us sleepy. So you have the melatonin and the adenosine working together. That's going to help us sleep better. And we're getting less light at night as the sun starts to go down, less overhead. Right there, you're regulating that metabolism, that circadian rhythm. Brilliant. Now you may be thinking, Joey, what do you do? Okay, really for the most days of the week, don't think if you don't do this seven days a week, you're like, oh my God, my circadian rhythm is going to be messed up. No, four or five days a week, at least I get up in the morning. If I get in my car, I'm driving to my office here. I'm rolling down the windows. I'm getting that light or I go for a walk in the morning. Hot and cold showers can really help as well. Um, some deep breathing techniques. All of these things will start to optimize your life. So we're less stressed out as well. I didn't point out in the video too, but those breathing techniques and getting the light will make us less stressed and less in that sympathetic, crazy fight or flight system and more in that parasympathetic, right? That nervous system say, or we're more calm. Getting light can really help do that as well. Sunlight, vitamin D, incredibly important. The sun gives us life and everything on earth life, quite literally. Now, over the past few years, people know the importance of getting vitamin D, so we're popping all sorts of vitamin D, but still, there's a lot of vitamin D deficiency. Why is that? We're not getting out in the sun and getting enough of those positive UV rays to absorb our vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is really a hormone. It's essential in our hormone function. It helps everything from mood to sex drive, recovery after exercise. Now, your body makes vitamin D naturally when it's exposed to sunlight. And even as little as 20 minutes of exposure in the sun can be enough for your daily vitamin D levels. And it doesn't need to be 20 minutes all at once, right? It can be five minutes, four times a day, or 10 and 10, easy math. And vitamin D also regulates, yes, the melatonin, as we talked about. It's incredibly important. Now, getting that vitamin D and that sunlight increases serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter associated with feelings of happiness, which is the main uh, neurotransmitter associated with depression. When it's too low, we get depressed. I know I've been depressed and I suffer from clinical depression. Now, this is a primary factor when people get sad or seasonal affective disorder. We're getting less light, we're getting less vitamin D. In turn, those neurotransmitters are messed up and we're less happy. It makes a lot of sense. Now, if all of these things don't get you outside to get enough sun exposure, a recent study has looked at vitamin D and testosterone levels. Your testosterone is very important for you, yes, men and females, and having proper vitamin D can regulate our testosterone. Now, testosterone helps with working out, work with, with recovery, and of course, libido. So get outside and get that sun and maybe you know. Now think about this. Now beach cultures are hubs for the muscular and athletic. And Muscle Beach has been world famous as an outdoor workout venue and even Arnold Schwarzenegger has frequented it. Now uh, a lot of bodybuilders go there. I mean they get their workout, they get their sun and their testosterone levels are going up and they're able to push that weight just a little bit more. Now they may not have known the science at the time back in the day when they started Muscle Beach but these beach communities do benefit from a constant testosterone um, supplement of that vitamin D and getting the sun just by spending time outside. Now, exposure to light has been shown to increase testosterone levels and interest in sex in men above the age of 40. I know a lot of guys as they're getting older, testosterone levels start to go down and uh, their libido goes down with it. Now, regarding testosterone, sunlight exposure to your private regions may be the most effective method. Pretty impressive. Now, also a study on humans published in 1939 cited evidence that sunlight exposure to the genital area, that's fun to say, genital area, increased testosterone production in men by 200%, twofold, whereas exposure to the chest only resulted in a 120% increase. So that's still pretty good, but 200 there, 120 here. So what I'm saying here is it's okay to tan in the nude. <laughs> 
just just make sure you do it in a place you're not going to get arrested um or even go in a red light therapy place is really good i love red light therapy for a sauna uh, incredible benefits for that and I'll, I'll do another video on that now what do i recommend i'll get at least 20 to 30 minutes of sunlight exposure at least three times a week okay doesn't need to be every day if you can great but 20 to 30 minutes three times a week now you want to wear as little as clothing as possible while you're doing this and try not to lather on a bunch of sunscreen because that's going to block the rays uh i promise i have to check with your doctor first but i promise not putting on that sunscreen for five or ten minutes is going to be okay but if you're in the sun for an extended amount of time going on a vacation of course you want to protect yourself so doing this three times a week or every day is going to increase that vitamin d you're going to get going to help your hormones and everything else we talked about and getting that proper sunlight is going to save you some money as well sunlight is free get outside and you know you don't need to buy that expensive vitamin d supplement also one thing that helps when you go outside more is you are going to limit the potential risk of getting that sunburn as i talked about earlier if your skin is getting used to that so it's building a protective layer and as a lot of bodybuilders know and people know the tanner you are often the better you look and your muscles show up a lot more i know i like getting a tan and sometimes i use it from a tube it smells a little funny but I look good. Now your tan is a product of melanin in your skin. This is the body's personal defense system. It's actually pretty cool uh, to UV rays. Now, if you have access to high fences in your backyard, then maybe you wanna go out. Pew! Let it all hang out in the nude. Just protect those private parts when you can from animals and anything else. All right, to wrap it all up, sunlight getting light is incredibly important in our lives. So we need to make sure we do this in the proper succession in order. Now, it doesn't take a lot to see these differences. Just really being aware of the light patterns throughout the day, um, doing the things I said by putting them on the blue light glasses, turning off the overhead lights at night, um, maybe avoiding your phone as much as possible within a couple hours of going to bed, your phone, your screen, anything like that, pick up an actual book would be a great thing for your overall health. Now, these techniques are very simple, but often things that are simple are sometimes the hardest for people to implement. So do them one at a time. Don't think this video, you need to do every single thing, get outside three times a week for 20 to 30 minutes, take that walk in the morning, get blue light blocking glasses, turn down your overhead lights, one step at a time. If you can do them all at once, bravo, amazing. Amazing. Good on you. And furthermore, these techniques are pretty much all free. You just watched a free video, free techniques, and I promise you doing all these things will help your life feel so much better, more complete, more energy, better workouts, more sex drive. The list goes on and on and on. I'm Joey Thurman. Thanks for being here. You know all the things to do on YouTube. I don't need to remind you, even though I just kind of did. Cheers. Be well.